So we'll be putting all this on this 34 and getting it ready to go into the five. And let's get started. All right, guys, what's up, man? It's your boy Crucial RC here again. Um, got a little short video of just exactly what it takes to um, install the engine in uh, a low C5, uh, whether it be the B or the T, pretty much the same thing. But I figured I'd do a little quick video on it. Um, let's see what we got here. We got um, some of the things we're gonna need. We have, uh, of course, we got the engine. You know, we're gonna have to have a nice engine. This is, happens to be the Signature Series OBR 34cc modified, but you're gonna need clutch bell, right? <clears throat> pinion. This is 21 tooth pinion. And part number for that. We got the turtle racing uh, clutch bell, race grabber clutch bell. All right, to go with that, we're gonna need some engine mounts. There's 21 too, you can see the 21 on there. All right, there's vertigo. All right, we're gonna need, now, this is not a necessity, but you know, I, I, you know, I like these braces, but this is the top brace. We got the mount for there, the uh, part number. We're gonna need the clutch carrier. Now there's a ton of different ones for clutch carriers, but I like the TLR version. Let's see if I can get you the number. I like the TLR version because it has the, the mounts, the screw hole on the top for the uh, the top mount. Not all of them have that. So some some of them, some of these clutch carriers you can't uh, use a top mount. So make sure if you get the top mount you get a clutch carrier that has that, that threaded hole at the top. We're gonna have um header stud kit. This is by MOD. Alright. And the big necessity is this kill switch. Alright. And we will be needing the carburetor for here. So this is a modified 1107. To go in here. So that's everything. Let's get started. So here we go. Let's go ahead and start by um, we're gonna install the uh, the um, kill switch. Uh, killer B. This is the number here. All right. Let's go ahead and start here. Let's pull. Uh, just pull this cover off. So let's take pull this cover off. Set that to the side. All right, what we want to do is remove this coil and out of the kit, break one of these kits out. All right. Now, the other half of the kit's already sitting in the truck, so this is what you need to install on the actual engine itself. And you got a red and a black wire, right? They tie in, you take this kill switch right here off, all together, and it just hooks on both sides of this coil, and then you hook this back on the coil. Now, they say there's, it doesn't make a difference if it's you know red and black, but the coil should say red and black on it, positive and a negative, actually. So positive be your red, negative be your black. New uh, engine kill button. And then we'll just route this wire out from the shroud. All right, easy. 
no problems. And like I said, I think this kill switch one is about 50 bucks, I think. Um, it's a $10 option if you want a LED light included with it. But um, I'll show you that a little later. All right, so let's um, pull this coil out. It's two bolts right here on the top, side by side. We'll pull those off. <coughs> I like to do, I like to rotate this flower all over. Just so it's kind of in between the, the magnet section. And what it is is there's magnets on this um, flywheel, which uh, induces on the coil, which sends the voltage to your spark plug. And the magnets give you a timer. So every time the magnet goes through, it induces voltage, sends uh, magnified voltage through onto the uh, spark plug. So that's how you know, it's real elementary, but that's how it works, man. It's crazy. It's like almost like magic. So let's pull a coil off. All right, now be careful because there's a little plastic spacer on the back side of the coil. We'll get that out. No problem. Oh. Oh, see, one drop. One of those little spaces dropped down inside there. This is that little space I was talking about. Alright. Get that out. There it is. That little space. Alright. Well, we got the original coil. Let's see if this one shows positive and negative on here. Give me a screwdriver pry up on this. So this isn't a genuine there's a Noah, so Beat by IQ. It doesn't say on it. But we'll put it back the way it was with the positive on this inside. Alright, so we got Let's see if I can get y'all a little closer. Alright. So here's your engine kill switch. Let's fit this, make sure it fits on here tight. You don't want this thing coming off. And it's a little loose, actually. A little too loose for me. So I'm gonna take some needle nose. Make some needle nose and crimp this down. Just a little bit, not too much, just a little bit. You know, just make a nice positive connection. So, nice, that, that's how I like it, nice and tight. All right, so there we go. Easy schmeasy, right? All right, yeah, another thing I like to do, I like to run a little bit of tape around here just to cover these wires up, protect that insulation. All right, so that's all on there, that's good to go. And let's get this back on here. So feed. Feed that through the shroud. Now I'm used to the carburetor sitting up here, but with the reed valve, it looks like it sits underneath. Just like this is my first reed valve engine. Go. Right, so we'll feed that through. Such. Got spacers behind the behind the bolts. Just 
a little tricky part right here trying to get these things, these spaces on here without falling off. Alright, get this back in here where the spark plug comes through. And like I said, if you look at the flywheel, see that? That's the magnet right there. Now if you had that magnet on the top part, it would be attaching to these uh retracting to the coil and it'd be hard to actually get your spacing you need for this thing. So what I like to do is get it started. Now get them screwed in. Not tight, you know, leave enough so I can get a, a gap tool on here. Gap tool. There's a number. Business card, whatever you want to use. To each their own. I'm not going to tell you to get whatever I got or whatever. Whatever works for you. Whatever makes that thing work. I'm I'm known for just wanting to do everything to the T to the book for the most part. Anyhow. Right. Put that under there. Let's get this. Fly will turn it around now to where the magnets are up there. Alright, now I'm going to pull down on this coil tight. And I'm going to tighten it up. And like that, turn this flywheel, get this filler gauge out. That's it. Put this back in the bag. So we don't misplace it. That's it. Now you have your kill switch basically installed. Nice compression on this thing. We'll put the uh, cover, put the cover back on. And then, well, that's it. All right. All right. So there we go. All right. Got the kill switch wire here. I'm just going to move it around underneath the car, underneath the engine mount, and then bottom of it, and wrap around something like similar like that, and then going over to the uh, receiver box. All right, so here we go. So we got the kill switch on. All right, all right. So what's next? Got to mention pull start um, outerwear. Let's get that on. Simple outerwear. Part number black. All right, free filter. Nothing fancy, just a black, good outerwear cover for this thing. Comes with the outerwear. It has uh, some Velcro to wrap around the outside of the pull start. Um, what we got here? Some instructions. And some decals. Put this off the side and get down to business, baby. Let's pull the uh, pull start cover off. All right. So we'll take a get us a good simple green. Spray it down on a nice little paper towel. And you just want to clean these edges up. Get any kind of oil off of them, because that is where the Velcro will be sitting at. All right. So you got your Velcro. It comes in one long strip. All right. So we're going to start putting it around here. Let's get some scissors out. Get some scissors. And um we'll start start putting on here. Now, I like to start at the bottom and work my safe way around. I guess it's just me, but you know it's just how I do it. Alright. Pull that off. There we go. Try to keep your hands away from it. See all that extra they give you? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I'm gonna cut this off. Mm -hmm. Alright, so there we go. Mm -hmm. Put 
push it on it down, make sure everything is nice, good contact on it. All right, and that's the part of the prep work we got so far. Next thing we gotta do, we gotta pull this handle off. All right, you don't want it to go into this uh, um, pole and everything. I want this cord to get ripped down inside. If not, you're gonna have to be digging that back out. So, what I like to do is pull this cord out. All right, do this and get some you know, nose vice grips, any type of vice grips. Just like it right there, it allows that to hang. All right. That way you can push this out. Um, it's not as enough good not to learn. Alright, that goes out. I'll pull that out. And then we'll stick the pull start cable through that core, through that hole right there. Scripts. So now let's uh, get it back, mount it back on the engine. <clears throat> then we'll put the full start down over the top of the Velcro. All right. So we got the outer wear on now. No problem. Easy smeezy, right? So we got the outer wear. Check. Kill switch, remote kill switch, check. All right, what's next? Let's turn around to the front. And it's time to do the pinion and clutch carrier. All right, so we got the grabber clutch bell. All right, so you can see that we got nice, uh, grooves in there for grabbing on that shoe and we have the clutch carrier and we're going to do some good old bearing lube on here like I do all my bearings when we uh, run them a little dab on all four sides of it right. So that's all good. I'll let that sit for a second. Put that off to the side. Got screws for that. Um, now these things come shipped with, uh, I'm sure they come with like some kind of oil and I can feel it. So I'm gonna take and spray the inside with some brake clean. Same thing with the uh, clutch shoes. All right, I'm back. So we got that uh, clutch shoe sprayed down, brake clean. Got the inside of the clutch bell sprayed down with some brake clean. And Make sure it fits on there. Good to go. So we'll take the clutch bell, slide inside the housing. Right, turn it nice and free. Right. Put that housing right on top of there. Get started. Get a little bit of car cleaner to clean these. Uh, Screws off. We put some Loctite on it. Get a 
I started. Car cleaner. Um, so you can see, look at that. See all that in there? Every time, every time these things are shipped. Ship with uh, oil on it. And that oil will stop your, uh, what I say, the oil will stop the Loctite from setting. Put a, a dab on there. I don't have to go too crazy with it. So we'll grab the pinion, make sure everything moves nice and free. And it does, everything nice and free on there. Alright, so once again, clean off the screw. Little dab of Loctite on the end of that bolt also. Nice we'll use our plastic jaws to hold the pinion. Get us a nice snug. And that's done. So we got everything on here now. Um, we got everything minus the stud kit, which I don't really want to put on yet because I don't have the exhaust yet. So I gotta see how it comes out. If I need to cut the studs down some length um, to allow the curve of the of the um, exhaust manifold, you know, I, I'm just gonna leave that off. I might have to leave. I might have to cut them. Might not. Don't know. So I'm just gonna leave that off. And then I don't have the carburetor on here yet. I'm getting on the truck and. Um, Make sure everything fits and all, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, in order to get the engine in, we just have four bolts one, two, three, four, and one on the center. All right, so let's get this in here. All right, so here we are. We got the engine in there. Don't forget to align your numbers on your lower engine mounts facing the gas tank. Numbers go on the bottom facing the gas tank. Alright. So here we are, we're gonna put the top mount engine mount on here. Um as you can see I have the no name engine brace on here also for the servo I mean I'm sorry we have the no name servo brace on here. Alright so we're gonna have a little bit of modifications we gotta do in order to keep make both of these fit on here. Now this has to mount below this brace. So I think what we're gonna be doing is taking and raising this up to land on top of this thickness. All right, so <clears throat> this will go on the top half and we'll have to get some kind of spacers to put underneath here and some longer screws for these. So. Here we go, back to the shop, baby. All right, so we just got the, that fitted on there, no problem. All we're good to go, let's put these screws in that for now, and then we'll see what goes on with this piece sitting on top of here, all right? All right, now these are the, this is the stock top um, mount screws that go down into the um the uh in here and we need a little bit longer one to go because of the added depth that we're working on also had to uh adjust this 
to get that linkage in so it doesn't rub up against that blue uh, mount. All right, so I don't have a spacer right now, but we'll just put these two screws in here for now to hold it. I'm gonna put a couple um, a couple nuts on the bottom and just hold that tight. Maybe we're on a tight to clamp it down. So I think that's what I'll do. But here we are. That is how you install an engine into a low C5. All right, all right, guys. Stay tuned. I'm going to have another video. Um, I had a comment a little bit ago from uh, CBR Wix. He was asking about how to hook up the linkage for your servos and stuff. So that's the next video coming. Um, hope y'all like this joint. So stay tuned for the next one. All right, man. It's your boy Crucial. I'll see you. I'll holla at you. Out.